My name is George Mandis, and I'm going to talk about my year living as a digital nomad. In 2013, I literally circumnavigated the globe, living and working in 18 different countries. I'm going to touch briefly on how I made that happen and just what some of my general takeaways were from that experience. So the title of this talk is a uh, year like any other just somewhere else. I actually pulled that from an email to a friend of mine at the time. I told him I can't go on vacation, I can't go on sabbatical, I just kind of want to take my life on the road and see what it looks like in other places. So I did that and I took it to a lot of other places. I took it to Peru, Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, Iceland, France, Spain, Portugal, Kenya, Tanzania, Greece, Bulgaria, Turkey, Serbia, Malaysia, Thailand, Hong Kong, and uh, Japan. I think I got it. Yes, okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so nobody actually asked me why I did it. Most people say that sounds like a lot of fun. It was, but I feel like I should have a slide that touches on that. Um, as a freelance web developer, I have a very location independent lifestyle, and I thought it would just be a fun way to put it to the test and see if I can really do it. So, how did I do this? Uh, a lot of people think it's expensive, and it can be if you do it certain ways, but it also can't be if you do it my way. Uh, there's a lot of books and blogs out there about this, but my short advice would be bundle your tickets, cook at home, try to stay with families, and just go to countries where you're dollar goes far if you can. Uh, the other thing that I had to figure out was how am I going to do my work? Well, it turns out the internet is is truly worldwide. It is aptly named. <laughs> so it's uh, for my kind of work, uh, it's actually pretty easy and for a lot of people, surprisingly. Um, Work-life balance. This is a difficult thing to figure out regardless if you're traveling, honestly. But I was really worried about this before I started on this venture. I was worried that being 10 to 18 hours ahead of my clients is going to be a problem. And I don't know why, that might be a different talk, but it turned out to be more of a boon than a detriment. It was actually better. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about traveling for a year and what that's like. People are going to ask you, what was your favorite place? And I promise you, your favorite place is going to have nothing to do with the place you went and everything to do with the people that you meet. I'll talk a little bit more about this later. Um, you're going to miss things and that's okay. <laughs> you know, you're going to be holed up in Paris for three weeks during a deadline and not go see things. And people are going to be like, what did you do for three weeks in Paris if you didn't go see the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre? And, you know, it happens. Um, plan less. The less you plan, the more you open the doors in your life to having magic come in. I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but ever since I did this a few years ago, I think much more in terms of trajectories instead of static itineraries and destinations, just having directions. Uh, be uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, particularly as Americans, I think traveling, I think it's good to see how a lot of other people in the world live. Um, I went to a lot of places where I can't drink the water. I went to some kind of slummy places. I had unwelcome bathroom guests, as you can see. Um, I, I think there's a lot of value in that. Uh, packing light is another takeaway from this. Uh, I think it's just good advice in general, but um, the thing to remember more than likely, wherever you are going, people live there. You know, don't forget that. Like, they figured it out, you'll figure it out too. Um, <laughs> Plan to take time off. This one's funny. I remember telling my friend, I think I'm going to go on vacation next week. He's like, I thought you'd been on vacation. <laughs> and I think the important thing to remember, if you're traveling for an extended amount of time and working, don't conflate vacation with traveling. Uh, rest is important, even if you're somewhere else. Okay, so as far as opening your life to magic, uh, I... On the right there is my grandfather, and on the left is his brother. They were separated at a very early age, and he tried to connect later in life, but it never worked. Uh, I didn't plan on doing this, but I managed to connect with his relatives some like 50, 60 years later. <laughs> okay. And that was one of the many good things <laughs> that happened. Uh, a lot of good things happened in a year. You know, the Serbia thing was great. I, <laughs> I made a lot of good friends. And less good things happen too, because that happens in a year, you know? I got robbed. I, um, <laughs> I had a long distance relationship kind of fall apart, which is sad. And my grandma passed away too at one point. I and mean, a lot of sad things can happen in a year. And that kind of brings me to how I want to end this presentation, which is... <laughs> Not that, but, uh, you know, sort of advice to any would-be travelers, I suppose. If you think about, if you think about a year, <laughs> I shouldn't have put that one there. If you think about a year and all the ups and downs that can happen, you know, a lot of ups and downs can happen. And what I want to impart is that travel is a multiplier of those experiences. Maybe it's just constantly absorbing new things, but it... Um, it's going to amplify those experiences. So that's a good thing to bear in mind. And the last thing to bear in mind is uh, the real joy and profundity through travel comes in sharing those experiences. So write letters, write postcards, write a blog, give presentations to strangers in front of giant screens, you know, it helps. 
Thank you.